Let's take a look at the abs today and learn what some of the best exercises are for training the abs and what some of the best setups and technique cues to use are going to be to get as much as you can out of those exercises. First, the biggest mistake that I see people making with training the abs is only doing static exercises like planks. These muscles here through the midsection, they respond just like any other muscle to training. So static exercises like planks don't take the muscles through any sort of range of motion. If you're an absolute beginner, planks and static holds are really useful for basic stability strength. But if you want to increase their overall strength and development long term, you need to be taking them through their range of motion against some kind of resistance. Just like you want to be training, say, your biceps here by holding a weight here the entire time, or your legs by holding the bottom of a squat position for time, you shouldn't just train your abs through static holds. So let's first understand what muscles are we looking at here through the midsection. We have the rectus abdominis, which is actually underneath that first layer there. Here we see those vertical fibers. We also have the oblique muscles, which are these side muscles coming in on a diagonal. These are the external obliques. We can also go a little bit deeper to look at the, uh, the internal obliques. And finally, we can go deeper than that and go into the transverse abdominis, which is this internal weight belt that wraps all the way around your midsection. So if we can visualize how these things look from an anatomical perspective, it'll give us plenty of clues as to the best exercises and cues to use to get the most out of your ab training. First, the rectus abdominis here. So it's your six pack muscle. These muscles run in this vertical direction, as you can see here, and they attach up here around this rib cage, sternum area, and all the way down in towards your hips. So they're responsible for bringing those two areas together and closer to each other. So that means that they bring the rib cage down towards the pelvis when the lower body isn't moving. And that's like your basic sit up motion. And if the upper body here was fixed in place, such as in a reverse crunch motion, then the abs here will be responsible for bringing this pelvic region up towards the, the rib cage, or what would uh, visualize more so as a hanging leg raise or a reverse crunch motion. So both of these motions are just called trunk flexion. Doesn't matter whether it's the rib cage coming down or the pelvis coming up, just bringing those two points closer together, we call that trunk flexion. So if you're looking at training the muscles of the abs, we're looking at doing crunches and leg raise motions. Just make sure if you're trying to get abs, as opposed to say the hip flexors, which are a little bit lower down here through the, um, through the lower body, you want to focus on getting as much flexion through the trunk and the spine as possible, as this is the only way to take these muscles through their range of motion. A common mistake is to keep the trunk or your midsection right here fixed in a static position and focus on just bending forwards and backwards from the waist, which is a lot more hip flexors than it is abs. So if we take a look now and come back to these oblique muscles around the sides here. The oblique muscles run in a couple of different directions around the torso. And they have fibers, if we go a little bit closer here, we can see the fibers are running in this diagonal plane and also some, some of them are coming up in this vertical plane as well. So they do play roles in side bending and also this sort of rotational motion of bringing your shoulder across your torso to the opposite side hip. So that's where we're looking at your basic side bend exercises, whether it's standing with a dumbbell or on some kind of elevation, and also look towards wood chop rotational motions with cables or resistance bands. The key focus here is to think about bringing the shoulder down towards the opposite side hip. So lastly, we have the transverse abdominis, if we go all the way through here to the midsection. So this region is often referred to as the internal weight belt because it's responsible for supporting the trunk and protecting all the internal organs. 
So the main role here is to compress the midsection or to draw the belly button or the midsection in towards the spine. It's assisted here by the diaphragm and the internal oblique. So if we were to come and take a slightly more superficial view, you see the internal obliques here, they lie just directly on top of the, um, uh, the transverse abdominis. We ha also have the intercostals, which are these muscles here, and if we were to go super, super deep, you'd be able to see the diaphragm, which is that little upside down bowl or balloon that sits underneath the, um, the rib cage. So the main couple of motions that we're looking at here for the transverse abdominis are static holds, which is where movements like planks and hollow body holds can come in handy, but also looking at abdominal tucks, which is often overlooked. So to do abdominal tucks, all you need to do is simply think about pulling your belly button in towards your spine as much as possible. It helps to do this on a complete exhalation as that causes the diaphragm here to stretch up towards the thoracic region of the spine, which creates more space around the midsection for the transverse abdominis to be able to perform its action of contracting inwards and drawing everything in. There's actually an exercise from yoga called Yudhyana Banda, which was often used by old school bodybuilders to train their waist. It's commonly referred to as vacuum training. The main focus here is to completely exhale, which causes a contraction through your respiratory muscles like your intercostals up here and the internal obliques and the diaphragm, which will help to stretch everything up and away. And then you look at performing reps of drawing your midsection in towards your spine or these abdominal tucks via the transverse abdominis. I would normally do around three to five sets of five to 10 reps. It's incredibly challenging if you've never done it before, but it will give you a new level of strength through your midsection that you've probably never experienced much in the past. So the final thing to note here is that it's pretty much impossible to isolate any one region through your midsection. All of these muscles are interrelated due to their placements and shared roles. So an extra thing that I like to focus on on all ab exercises is to pair the breath specifically with a portion of the exercise that you're doing on any movement. So I would normally cue to exhale forcefully as you reach that peak contraction on all ab exercises. It helps to fully shorten whichever muscle it is that you're training. Now, before we finish up, I just want to give a quick mention to something that I'm super excited about, which is something I've been working on behind the scenes now for close to the entire year, which is a complete update to my app, Gambaru Method. There's now a brand new nutrition calculator and nutrition tracker to log your intake, along with a whole new educational section, giving you more biomechanical breakdowns just like this, more programming and training advice, and lectures on nutrition, injuries, mobility, and more to give you access to everything that you need to train with me, learn from me, and reach your goals. And that's on top of the entire programming library that features over a dozen full 12-week programs where I'll tell you not just what exercise to do for how many sets and reps, but give you instructional breakdowns on how to perform each exercise properly and get the most out of your training. So whether you're a complete beginner, first time in the gym, or an advanced high-level athlete or coach, there'll be something in here for you. You can try it all out absolutely free and go through the new simple five minute onboarding process where I'll suggest the right program and nutrition breakdown for you to get started. Hit the link in the description down below for a free trial to check it all out. All right, that's it for today, guys. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop any other questions and comments that you have down below and I'll see you all next time.